All right, gentlemen. So we're going to chat a little bit about some of the stuff that wears on us over here, mm -hmm. which is kind of a negative about the Philippines. And I also want to brush on a couple of guys that personality types maybe mm -hmm. that won't fit in here just yep. due to yep. our observations over time. And I actually got inspired to do this little video because I had dinner a couple, three nights ago with a perfectly sweet guy. Um, very cordial host, spent a lot of time making a nice dinner for us mm -hmm. and announced that he was leaving and never coming back. Oh. And that uh, right. he just couldn't handle all of the abnormalities that exist out here. So I'm going to rely on you guys. I'm not going to tell his story. Tell me your story. Jason, you can start it off as to one or two things that just gets under your nerves. Right off the top, and this, you'll hear this over and over, it's the noise. Yeah. Just let me give you a little tiny example. I live on a slight grade in the street. I have to close the door twice a day, and I'm doing Zoom interviews, etc. Can't hear because of the motorbikes going up the hill. They've got loud pipes, and they love their loud. This morning, a young man went by, yeah. And he it sounded like he was doing Morse code with his bike. Roomba, roomba, roomba going up the hill. <laughs> it's loud. So. And they like it loud here. Yeah, they the like Filipinos it loud. Filipinos like yeah. it loud. Yeah, I don't think they have rules like muffler, things like that. Yeah. There are actually, there's noise ordinances, and I know it's supposed to shut off at 10. And I have found, thankfully, that in my neighborhood, they observe that. But they will play everything. They turn, speaking of 10. They turn it up to 10 mm -hmm. yeah. and it gets all distorted if they're mm -hmm. doing karaoke or having a party yep. instead of putting it at five where it's clear a lot of everybody roosters, can hear rooster noise, roosters dogs an animal. dogs barking and then you also have karaoke and what about the people the people themselves just sit down and will fire up and it's just loud mm -hmm. the conversation is louder than normal what's another one yeah. you have it reminds me of um Remember ever standing in line, say at the bank in America, and everybody's just kind of quiet and to themselves. Mm -hmm. but there's that one guy on the phone bragging about the oh. sale he just made, yeah. and yep. uh, the commission, oh. and the car, and he's rah, 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 and lets everybody, everybody around knows. him hear it. Well, take that guy and put him over here, and that's everybody. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> They're all talking as loud as they possibly can, especially yeah. on a phone. And so finding just a little peace and quiet or serenity we're coming here to forest camp, we found it. Yep. But it's one of the rare places where you can come and just meditate, read a book, relax, and uh, have a conversation. Yeah. So this, noise, yeah. You, you asked me what, it, what else bothers yeah. me. Yeah. And this is a small thing and it's pervasive throughout Asia, but there is, uh, you go to a store, prices are pretty fixed, but you buy something in the market or whatever, when you show up with this face, mm -hmm. it's a, you know, there's a, a white tax. Mm -hmm. or a foreigner tax is what it really is and you don't know what that is so everybody ever most of the foreigners will send their girlfriends or their friends to go buy stuff and if that irritates you if that if you find that process irritating well it's always always going to irritate you it just doesn't go away right so that that foreigner tax now understand of course you're getting it very cheap to begin with but some people have a philosophy of you're cheating me. And if you feel that way, man, it's gonna just grind on you. It's gonna grind, it, and because it'll never go away, it becomes a bigger issue over time. True, true. Yeah. What about bugs? God, there's so many bugs here. Uh, mosquitoes and ants are the number two. Of course, they do have a few cockroaches. It's buggy here. You're in the tropics. <laughs> it's tropical weather. It's humid. It's hot and humid. So, yeah. yes, bugs thrive. Uh, but my biggest couple of pet peeves would be the power going out without any rhyme or reason. The power just blacked out for a couple hours in the middle of the night. And you need the air con or a fan or something. Because uh, it gets stifling hot inside your house or apartment mm -hmm. uh, without any kind of air movement. And uh, so the power, there's no guarantee. It could happen any day, any time. Uh, I, I'm out. kind of chuckling over here because you, you actually took my thunder when you said that it's a blackout. Uh, you got to understand, 
Nobody calls it a blackout. It's a brownout. Well, a brownout is where the electricity kind of dims and the lights get brown. <laughs> I yeah. tried that. I tried that with Carolyn. Uh, yeah, she's still going to call it a brownout. There's no such thing as a blackout here. Yeah, go, yeah. Go figure. But trust me, it's a blackout. It's a blackout. I know. Have you guys adjusted and adapted to that? Does it bother you? Or are you guys cool with it? That they call it a blackout yeah. or a No, 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 just so that it happens. Just that it no, happens. No, it's annoying. It's really annoying. So you still get pissed off about it? Not pissed, but it's annoying. It's annoyed. Okay, you I get annoyed. Get pissed, Do you I carry can. that annoyance with you into the next day? It's a little... You no, can. I don't. You don't? No, okay. I let it go. Yeah. It's, it's at the moment annoying. It's yeah. hot. It's All right. And I'm not happy about it. All right. And that's about the time you finally give up and open up the windows and doors or go outside. That's when the power comes back on. It's not what you think. <laughs> you're going to solve the problem. And you, you wake up in the middle of the night and you just wait some two hours. Okay. What uh, about doing stuff like um, opening up a bank account or getting a driver's oh license? or? Well, I've been there twice now. Tell us about your driver's license. So you have to have a passport, of course. I had that. And you got to take a, an exam, uh, a medical exam, and I paid for that. And uh, it's, that's a joke in itself because... I'm wearing corrective lenses, and I I take medications, but the lady fills it out <laughs> and says no medications, no corrective lenses needed. Okay, I mean it's just and you pay 400, so it's only 400 pesos. It's not a lot of money. What is that? Eight, seven, seven, eight, eight bucks. Okay, U.S. So and then you get through all that, and they say come back in two hours. You come back in two hours and says, uh, sir, we can't give you your driver's license because you have to have six months on your visa but you could only get a visa for six months, okay? Now they changed the rule, you could only get a visa for two months, I believe. I think uh, the six is still on the table. It's still on the table. Uh, yeah. Here in Duma, mm -hmm. they, won't, they won't let you do six anymore. So, and so they said, okay, well, you're gonna have to go get a one month, okay, when I went there, and so I have a full month, and then during that month, get a six month, which extends after the one month, so I have three, three weeks plus to, to go in there to get my driver's license. It's just, it's just, I think they made that rule up. Sometimes the rules just change based on the person that you have behind the counter. That's true, we were talking earlier. Monday you can go in and see a guy named Bob, and he says there's no way, no how. And then it's because he really didn't know how to do it, so he just wanted to get rid of you. And then on Tuesday you see, you know, Frank, and yeah. Frank says no problem. You really got do this and that. The rules up. And yeah. the thing is on that, you're talking about the driver's license, yeah. but you were talking about banking. Yep. And really, when you look at that, it goes across the board. It goes just throughout whatever you're doing. Yeah, it hits Any all kind of, them. of documentation, official process. And I'm not talking government. I'm just talking about the bank or buying something at the store or whatever. That's kind of how it works. And be, be willing to be absolutely flexible because it will change on you. Uh, to open a bank account, you have to be here so many months. Mm -hmm. You have to have an ACR card. I go to the bank, I, I fill out all the paperwork and everything else, and they say, okay, uh, fingerprint, they fingerprint me, and they take my photo and say, come back in two weeks, we'll have your card. I go back in two weeks, and it says, uh, uh, 30 minutes, I, I don't know what they're doing, for 30 minutes. They say, obviously you just don't have the card, I'll just come back another day. No, that was not the problem after 30 minutes. The problem is, they never saved the fingerprint or the photograph. It's not saved, it's nowhere to be found. Okay, so they need me to start all over again with the figure that I gotta wait another two weeks. So from ground zero, you're just like you never went in? <laughs> yeah, wow. but you know, it's just it's just it's like it's not my yada here. Mm -hmm. It's it's next month. Okay. <laughs> it's next month. But you yeah. see gold figures laughing about it. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. you're just like, well, whatever. <laughs> you know, yeah. two I'm more retired. weeks is two more weeks. Well, I'm here because, forever, right? Because I'm yeah. retired and I don't care. Okay. But if you're not that kind of a guy, personality yeah, wise. Personality. Yeah then it becomes grinding on you. Uh, there's a fellow I know who uh, is an attorney. He's uh, from Europe, but he's an attorney. And so he's very, very comfortable with going to an attorney and say, hey, I need this thing. I need a land title, for example. And the attorney writes up the contract and then he reads the contract and says, but wait a minute, you didn't, you didn't do the research to, to do due diligence. Is this contract good for the uh, residential no it's only for agriculture well why didn't you do that I'm buying to build a house and so the the attorney that wrote the contract yeah. wrote it for the one thing that was stated and they didn't take it and then do all the other stuff now that again applies back to going to get a bank account or all these other things lease agreements How about a joke they don't they don't have a standard lease agreement right uh, <laughs> I had guests over we have a pool at my place I had guests over 
uh, two, two, two kids, and the owner came over and said the kids can't go in the pool. Okay? I go, what do you mean? Oh, well, we don't allow guests to be in the pool. Only the tenants can go in the pool. Oh, I, I pulled out my, my rental agreement. It doesn't say anything in there about that. Oh, but that's, that's a fact. That's just a fact. Oh, dog. Oh, you can't have a dog. Well, there's nothing in here about pets. There's nothing written about pets. Next door neighbor has a dog. Yeah, my neighbor <laughs> above me has a dog. Okay. Uh, well, he's been here a longer time. Well, I'll be here a long time too in a few years. So, yeah. I mean, it's just a lot of lacking. And then they wanted me to notarize the lease agreement. So they had me sign the notary paper page, okay, and sign every page, and then took it to the lawyer to, to guarantee my signature. <laughs> Right. That doesn't work. That doesn't happen. I never met the lawyer. But yes, it does right. work. <laughs> yeah. but that, yes. it, it and, and you make it really well. Good point. That's exactly yeah. what we're talking about. For some guys, that will drive you up a crazy. Well, yeah, I'm, because, you know, I, I was a notary. And I had a log book, and I yeah. had to see your driver's you license. Never saw this and I had to write out all this stuff. And go through all this it, hoopla, signed, have you sign in front of me, yeah. then have you sign the document and then compare the signatures mm -hmm. and all that, and then I would stamp it and I would sign it, mm -hmm. and it's like a $20,000 fine if I didn't follow through right. with all right. that kind right. of stuff. Never saw the notary, Ooh. never signed this book. No, it's but just a stamp. my signature. And <laughs> it's, yep. just, it's just, uh, I find it laughable now that I've figured it out that mm -hmm. it, we don't play by the same rules. Exactly. But you get the guy over here, and there's nothing wrong with the guy. The guy wants nope. to play by the rules. Right. He's used to it. He's seen how it works. And it's one of those undercurrents that just chase away at him. Yep. And some of us are able to let that go. Yep. Expect say, oh, well, it's the Philippines. Right. It's what and the is. other guys that may be watching this video. Yep can't let it go. And I'm saying there's no right or wrong either way. And they have a strong sense in their mind of what's right. Sure. And they can't, as you say, they can't let it go. That strong sense of what's right. Uh, and if they go to a yeah. restaurant, here's another one. It's, it's, a, it's another peppy. But I just want eggs and bacon. I don't want toast. I don't eat carbs, okay? I just want eggs and bacon. Well, it comes with rice. I don't want the rice. Okay? Well, they can't leave it off. They can't bring you just eggs and bacon, okay? You have to find something on the menu, and it has to be exactly the way the menu is, okay? So I said, okay, just put it in a separate bowl. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense, because I'm not going to eat it, but they have to make it exactly, you know, they can't just, there's no such thing as special orders no. in a restaurant. You can't say, you know, instead of bacon, can I have, you know, sausage or something? You can't do that. Here's what my wife came up with on that, is... We don't fight them anymore. If it comes with something that we don't want, we just buy it because we don't want to have a five-minute conversation where everybody gets confused right. <laughs> and nobody wins. So order it. We put it in a to-go bag. And as we walk out the restaurant, there's no shortage yeah. of kids or people. Mm -hmm. My wife will just say something to them, hand it to them. There you go. And we did our good deed for the day. Like I yeah. ordered a and cheeseburger. You know, 15 I, cents out of my pocket. Yeah. So yeah. I ordered a cheeseburger and I said, I don't want any tomato or lettuce on it. And they just stare at me like, or, you know, like I'm crazy. I go, just, just leave it off. Sir, we have to make it the way it's on the menu. It's like, okay, it's well, a little annoying, but, you know, I'll just pull it off, throw it away, whatever, you know. There's a, a, a broader topic that you're really hitting on here, and that is the literalness of most Filipinos. Uh, wow. Now, I'm not a jokester. I'm not, I don't have a funny personality. I wish I had, but I'm lousy at telling jokes. All right. But I have an American sense of humor. And so every once in a while, I'll, I'll throw something in there and they look at me like, what a jerk. Because what yeah, I said, don't, don't if, if, it's, if it's understood literally, well, I'm being a real jerk. I'm yeah. trying to find a nice word. <laughs> and because they're so literal. And part of that is the language thing. It's, it's boy, will that suck you in. If, if you don't uh, have this flexibility with language, and hey, let's face it, a lot of guys are not linguistically flexible. Well, you know, so you, you, you say it the way you say it, and they interpret it differently. And you, you come over here and it's seductive because most people speak some English, a large percentage of people are fluent, but 
it's not all the way to that deep conversational right. level. And so you think you're communicating, you think you're saying it, you think you're doing it, and then everything comes back wrong. Well, and you think you're making yeah. a joke. Well, satire is funny. flat over yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot satire. use satire. Yeah. Absolutely not. I almost got myself in a real world of hurt yeah. with one of my landlords because she sent a message, group text to all the tenants. I will be over today to pick up the money for the electric bills. Okay, so I wrote back because I was leaving and I said, what time will you be here? And she wrote back after lunch. And I said, what time's lunch? <laughs> <laughs> is it gonna be a yeah. long lunch or a short lunch? I was jacking around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was fun. funny. Yeah, yeah. She didn't. No, she no. came right back and said, well, I'll, how about I just let you go down and pay, stand in line and pay your own electric bill? Yeah. So yeah. I'm joking around. Yeah, yeah. They don't get it. They don't get it. To this no. day, she doesn't get do that, that joke. They don't do that joking stuff. No, no, so you've, you've got to be real clear with real the level. language and the factual. So yep. a good example, Paul. Yeah. And it's time. <laughs> so when you set up a time, forget <laughs> it. Nobody <laughs> is out of schedule here, okay? <laughs> one o'clock doesn't mean one o'clock, okay, in the afternoon. So they'll say, oh, I'll see you at one or come back at one. That could be two or three or four. Mm -hmm. okay. I, find, I find time is very much like the traffic rules. <laughs> yeah. They're suggestions. Yeah. 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 Times are it's on the, it's on, you know, it's listed. Your appointment is at this time. Yeah. That doesn't mean anything. It's here. a suggestion. You know what that's yeah. managed to do for me, which is via osmosis, which has been a positive, um, is that now, unless I'm meeting you guys, mm -hmm. you know, I know you're going to be on time. I know you're going to, if we say 10.30, yeah. I was waiting. For, I was late because I was waiting for them at the front. They yeah. were actually early. Inside, yeah. yeah. So today, but now when I someone says, "Oh, we're having a party, or we're doing this, or we're getting together," and it's at, 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 at after lunch, or it's at noon, or show whatever, up at four. Good I show up whenever the hell I want yeah, to, yeah. and nobody bats an eye. Nobody yeah. gets twisted over it. Yeah. Especially the locals. Yeah. You can wander yeah. in two hours late. Oh yeah. It's just the same thing. Yep. So it's like you said a lot. It's a suggestion. So good luck. Yeah. I've never seen a surprise birthday party because it's never. <laughs> the real surprise is not the people there. Never. Yeah. And they're yeah. usually there's throwing it for thing. themselves anyway. Yeah, there's no thing as a surprise birthday party. Well, you know, guys, yeah. we've been talking about kind of the in your face stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'd like to talk about something that, that I personally have had to deal with. And if these are the kind of things that bother you, seriously, check yourself before you come over here. And that are that is some of the smaller things that when you first get here, you don't pay attention to them, you don't see them. But there's this subtleness to the difference in the culture that you find grinding. And after a while, that subtlety just starts pissing you off. And you wind up waking up angry or waking up okay, but then you see the sink hasn't been cleaned in a month. And I mean cleaned out, you know, like like there's a little bit of around the, the bottom, there's a little bit of stuff in the bottom there and you say, well, clean it. I pay for a housekeeper, you know, who is there six days a week cleaning the house and she'll rake every leave in the yard. It's not like she's being lazy, but she doesn't see what I consider a cleanliness. I'm, I started to say standard, but it isn't standard. It's perspective. I yeah. see it this way, this way my mom cleaned and in general, the Philippines don't. Well, hey, that person may, my housekeeper literally has a dirt floor. Mm -hmm. So she's not gonna see what I see. You know, and, and there's no flushing in her toilet. I've no. been in her house, so I know what it's like. The fact oh, yeah. that you have a sink is a major deal. Yeah, they, and there is one sink. Uh -huh. And there's no hot water. People. No yeah. hot water in a bathroom sink. <laughs> so oh. these things, after a while, if you're not cognizant of it and say, wait a minute, I'm becoming angry, I'm becoming hostile, I'm, be I'm becoming a jerk. Uh, now I think that I'm becoming the jerk when I start getting into that place. But you know what? It's a legitimate place to be. And if you don't have the uh, emotional flexibility to start adopting that and then learning how to communicate softly, carefully, comfortably. Yeah, you have to be careful. Yeah. You, have to, yeah. you have to go That's very easy. well put. You do have now, to. You do have a legit gripe. Mm -hmm. because of the standards that we grew up to. Yeah. If you compare the two, but you have to do a gut check every now and then mm -hmm. and realize that it's fixable, but your technique of getting it fixed 
needs to be totally, not totally, but a lot different than you yep. may approach it, say, back home. Yeah. yeah. The way you communicate to people, you brought it up before when we were talking, you just have to show somebody this stain in mm -hmm. the sink is bothering me. Mm -hmm. And maybe even show them how you want it cleaned. They're not going to get offended by it. Right. They just, they're not mind readers. They yeah. think because they wiped it out and they didn't get the stain, oh, well, that stain's not killing anybody. Yep. It's the same thing when we go to use a public uh, commode. We've learned to carry toilet paper <sighs> with us and oh, wet mats or, or and, wipes. and yeah. wipes and all that kind of jazz. And it's going to be uncomfortable sometimes. Um, so, you know, again, that's just with the long term, you kind of get learned to get yes. prepared yeah. uh, you know, it's prior to roll. taking off for a long time. Yeah. Make sure you take care of everything before you leave it's the house, if you, possible. It's yeah. amazing that you go into a retail establishment and yeah. they don't have toilet paper and right. they never will. They never <laughs> don't have a, they don't have toilet paper roll. Yeah. And, and, and we weren't going to go there, but you can use your imagination. Yeah. yeah. There'll, there'll be a bucket. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's well, something I, mean, I can never get used to. No. <laughs> <laughs> a bucket and a scoop. And I'm looking at it like, what the hell am I supposed yeah. to do with that? Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and this is a, this is even in, in a ball sometimes in a, in a, in a small ball yeah. Robinson's Mall yeah. uh, downtown they do not have toilet paper yeah. no but the Robinson's Mall the they're Robinson's Mall here in town they have a coin operated machine where you can okay. buy but not packets, the one but not, not the, the one downtown not the one downtown yeah. right and they don't have any kind of paper towels to dry your hands nope. they don't have soap nope that's what jeans are for Nope. You dry your hands that's, on your. On that's the, fine if I had yep. soap to clean them first. I mean, come on. It's and that's that's a mall. They have multiple stores there. Yep. So it's like I don't get it. I don't. I don't know. It, it, what it wrote. You yeah. Know, yeah. This is the way it is here. So what do you say to guys that that are watching this and they go patience? Um, I can do it or I can't do it. I mean, you think it's actually possible to to quantify that before you come over here? Or will we trick ourselves because we want to live here? We say, oh, the Philippines is going to be great for me because oh, yeah. of the economics and I can, I, like I can meet a woman and I can do this and I can do that. I can deal with this, I can deal with that. Some guys may be fooling themselves. Um, I actually take my hat off and give a little golf clap to the guy that I met the other day that said, I, I can't deal with it. Um, the Philippines isn't going to change for me and I'm not going to change for them. So I think it was awesome that he came over here and gave it a try. Yeah. And it didn't kill, he didn't he didn't go all in on his way over here. I have he friends. kept his house, he kept his car, he came over on a, an exploratory trip, mm -hmm. figured it out, tried his best, tried to like it and just couldn't. Yeah. Um, I have female friends back back home um, married to their husbands and, and you know and married women and if they came over here they would not like the bugs. I'm going to tell you right now. They would have a problem with ants in the kitchen. And let me tell you, I don't know of any kitchen that doesn't have ants, okay? Uh, it, it, because it's humid and it's hot uh, and, and it's, it's just buggier here. Well, you also have daily, as you drive down the road, no matter where you go, you're going to have scenes that disturb you internally. At least they do. Dogs. The dogs. dogs, the poverty, the little poverty. kids running around with no shoes no on. Shoes and, dirty. and you know, you can't fix everything. You can maybe fix one or two. and um, it has a way, I think, of just mentally kind of wearing on me over time. You see it, and yeah. I feel kind of helpless because I can't fix that. I can't work out. I can't. I don't have a solution for it. Um, one of the things that I've learned to do is I take a vacation from my vacation whenever <laughs> possible. And it sounds absurd, but I found that just bugging out of the country once a year and going somewhere close because it's cheap. Uh, go to Thailand, Indonesia, Vietnam, Malaysia. been to all three, been back to the States. Mm -hmm. So I've been out of here four times. And I found that it did two good things. It gave me a break from my routine, got me out of the ordinary, and <clears throat> made me appreciate what I had when I got back here. Because we talked about earlier that I like the cowboy town, and I like the fact that I can just run the bike, and speed limits don't matter, and yeah. this doesn't matter. Well, it was really strict where I was right. in Thailand, mm -hmm. and there were yes. cops everywhere, and they right. put a boot on your on your bike if you parked it in one zone, right. and so it was a lot more uh, rigid as yes. far as that goes. It wasn't loosey goosey, and so 
initially that was awesome because everything was in order and I had missed the order. But after two or three weeks of it, it's like, I'd rather go Too back. I, made it, I appreciated the Philippines again. Yeah. I like the chaos yeah. I found. And then think, I just took a break. I think it's important See, I don't, I don't if you can handle chaos. it just to get out of just to get out for a while. I, 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 don't, see, come, I don't see this chaos, though. I see this but, simplicity. All right. Well, I you're like talking this. about why it's good. Let's go back to why it's bad. Uh, yeah. Okay. But I just okay. like the simplicity of it. I, I don't find those things that you find or most people would find difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, I find I, I, I like the less rules. Okay. I do, uh, too. And I think that's a real good kickoff on who can come versus who can't come. Right. Because if you like the rules, it's going to really, you know, really I do bug you. I helmets for the kids. I'm not going to change their their way of life. Is they don't wear helmets. The, the kids yep. have ride ride the, their parents' bikes. That's economic based. They don't wear shoes. They don't wear yeah. helmets. You know. Yep. So I give them helmets because they parents will never buy them helmets. Again, so. that's economic based. Uh, a lot of parents here would like to have helmets, they, they but they can't afford it. Afford it. Mm -hmm. um, but Paul, you asked the question a minute ago. It says, "What advice can we give?" And I, I think that one of the Let's, let's kind of back up just a little bit, if I may. And what's the reason? What's the motive for three old guys who are sitting here? I know you guys are babies compared to me, but we're, <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're approaching, we're over 50. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, what, what's the motive for most of the guys that come here? And that is age gap relationships. You have, uh, you're no longer invisible. You know, those the motives are very, very real. Economic freedom. Economic freedom. Yeah, those are big deals. Uh, going to another country and still being able to speak English. Exactly. So, now, if those things are, are enticing you and they're, they're going, oh, man, that's, that's so good. And I know I was there. You know, I was lonely. I found after my divorce that I tried to date. And, oh, my God, it was a train wreck every time. A different train wreck, but it was each one was a train wreck. And I became enamored with the idea of going to the Philippines, especially after watching all the videos that are out there that talked about the age gap and how it's mm -hmm. okay and the culture. That can be seductive, but you've got to check yourself. First of all, you say, okay, all the things that we've talked about here and said, uh, some of those ring true for me, but I really like the idea of, of having a young wife or even a young girlfriend or, oh, have sex that I don't have to pay for. You know, in the truck stop. Because <laughs> that really? was my option. Really? <laughs> that was my option. <laughs> well, those were, in my day, were called lot lizards. Well, <laughs> you're not going to go there, though. Okay. <laughs> I live in a small, 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 small off grid community in the middle of Montana. So that was my option. <laughs> you know, uh, because the local single women just simply were not an option because they wouldn't have me. Mm -hmm. yeah. So all of that becomes very, very seductive. But if you're, if the things that we've said kind of go, oh, wow, I really want to have a stop sign. I want to know who's getting to go. I want to know uh, that I'm going to go get my driver's license and it may take a day or five or seven and five times back. All those things are just really bother you. Check yourself, be honest on both sides of this thing. Say, yeah, I'm really looking forward to meeting a young woman. Uh, I'm really forward to having the financial freedom, those things. But give yourself a little time. Say, don't sell your car, don't sell your house. Uh, Keep those things. Say, I'm going to go for 90 days, or I'm yeah. going to go for 100. Yeah, you got to go for more than a month. Yeah, you got to come here for more than a month. I tell yeah, oh yeah. A That's a vacation. Not enough. Not enough. That's a not vacation. Enough. Six months. Get into the economy where you rent uh, a long term. Six months. Stay one place. Don't just travel around all of the Philippines because you're still a tourist. You're still on vacation. So rent a motorbike. See what, what it's like to, yeah. to ride a motorbike in this chaotic traffic environment. Paul and I love it. I love it. Yeah, all three of us love it. Okay, I, I lived in Vietnam and Thailand for 11 years. I've been doing it for a long time. I love it. But a lot of guys I talk to say it scares the crap out of them because there's no signal, there's no light. Well, you don't know where to go. I don't go. think we touched on this, but I'm sorry, Jerry. Well, I don't think we touched on this, but I think um, I don't think we talked about food. No, we didn't. Well, 
A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, but yeah. but not about the fact that you can't really get American taste of food here. That's Even in from the KFCs, the McDonald's, oh, no, the, they don't taste the same. They don't they, taste the no, same. They absolutely do not. McDonald's, KFC, no. They taste yeah. different here. Even Coca-Cola will have a different yeah, taste. Yeah. Different. You can yeah. order scrambled eggs and bacon, and, and you go to Denny's, and you, you, it's not even the same. I don't know why. No. Why is it different? I don't understand. It no. doesn't taste the same. I don't get it either. It yeah. taste I don't get it either. Uh, I think the chi the chickens uh, speak a different language, so that somehow <laughs> must be. <laughs> I mean, and all breads are sweet. It's very. I don't eat bread, so all breads are sweet. Very annoying. Everything's very sweet. They, have a, they go through a lot of sugar here. But on the flip side, if you do go into KFC this afternoon, you can get out of there with a three-piece meal. I think for five or six bucks. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. in America, you're going to pay twelve or thirteen or yes. fourteen really? for yeah. it. Well, That's what yeah. I'm hearing. And, um, and, and if you don't go to KFC, you actually get it for. Two bucks, 100, 125, yeah. 150 pesos. And then they have other little stands, what are they called, Street Crispy Denver. King. Yeah. 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 You just got to catch them after they cook it. Chain. You can't let it sit there too long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or you can get a rotisserie chicken for less than $2. Yeah. The whole chicken. Small, the whole but chicken. the whole chicken. The whole chicken. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, gents, what do you think? You think that um, we covered some of the topics that might put some guys off? Well, you think, I mean, uh, you know, they, they're gonna see they're gonna have to come here and experience it for themselves uh, because you don't realize you miss certain uh, creature comforts until you don't have them anymore mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. uh, you can't do anything you want or have anything you want at any time sometimes you have to be patient a lot of patience go to more than one location for what you want um, I know guys that had to go get their driver's license, they had to go to another city, which was about a four hour drive, right. just to get their driver's license, mm -hmm. um, or, or get something, paperwork done, uh, they had to go to Cebu. Like just you know, the things we take for granted in America, or, or home country. I wanted country. sour cream, I had a recipe, I liked everything. I could not find sour cream. I, I still find haven't it. found it. I, I had to I use yogurt, I had to, come up, I had to Google it and figure out what I could use instead. So I found yogurt. It's you know? little knucklehead things. Yep. Um, but that we're accustomed to at home and you're not going to find here and I have just learned to, to break it. Um, I, live, I, go, I just go It's with crazy the stupid how much food will cost that's imported that is still cheap in America. Yeah, I don't like macaroni that. and cheese, yeah, right? right? And that's like not even available here. It's uh, it, and it's, if, if it is, it's very expensive. A can of soup, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's imported. Yeah. It's good. You're and gonna you don't have double. all the varieties of Campbell's no. soups here. You get three. There's three no. types of Campbell's soup here: cream of mushroom, cream of chicken, and chicken noodles. And That's one other, it. one other thing that I, I think um, I just thought of this morning is if a guy is coming over here and he's a large guy or a big guy, and you're gonna you're gonna be here for a while, bring plenty of clothes and shoes mm. because I looked at shoes at yeah, Robinson's yesterday and I don't even know if they had my size but I picked them up and they were 120 bucks for shoes and yeah. uh, when I went back to the States I bought basically the same shoe for about 20 bucks yeah. 25 yeah. I don't know it's been a while maybe it's gone up since then call it 35 or 40 I would still be happy to pay that for a pair of comfortable shoes right. we're here if they have your size, and if it's available, you're going to pay through the nose for it. Yeah. Paul, I want to come back to something you talked about. If I may change the topic here sure. a little bit. You mentioned things that um, kind of grind on you. Yeah. And things that you see. And part of this video is to talk about the things that will bother people. So it's not just my pet peeve, but things that will bother you. And that's safety. You just don't see it. Now, we're used to a culture, we're all American, we're used to a culture that has safety built into it. Um, you know, I was a kid back in the 50s when you didn't even have seat belts. But today, if you're 40 or 50 years old, you grew up with seat belts. You grew up with the kid in the back of the car in a safety chair. You know, all these rules that keep us safe. You were saying earlier, you watched a guy drive by your place this morning with yep. a... Well, you tell that story. Well, it's real simple. A guy drove by my house this morning, and I thought of Goldfinger, because he does this helmet drive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I'll put a plug in for Goldfinger. He's got, what, 1,100 helmets right now? Yeah. You need another 150? I'm sure 150. Yeah, we just really, really thank everybody that's supported your, your do cause in the way. past. Thank you very much. So a shout out to all you guys that have helped Goldfinger. Anyway, um, this guy drove by my house and a little three or four year old was standing up behind him with his hands on oh, his yeah. shoulders, barefoot. Three or four years old. Yeah. On yeah. the on the standing behind his dad. Yep, standing behind his on dad. On a motorbike. On a motorbike. Zipping up the hill. Yeah. No helmet. No, I was thinking, man, that's, you know, you hit one bucket. big bump. Yeah. The kid's going to go I up like a bottle rocket. In my seat. Yeah. I carry child's helmets in my seat. So every time I see it and they're stopped, I don't want to stop them while they're riding, but if I see them stopped and I see a kid's going to go on the bike, I'll, I'll hand them a helmet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it just it, it, that obviously was a major pet peeve with the, the helmets on the kids. Right. So the overall, um, that, you know, that, that's one of the things that you can do. If you find pet peeves, you can make a, a difference. You can change, but don't let it, don't, don't let it irritate you. Don't let it get, get you mad. No. Uh, move on it, which is what you've done. You've created this situation yeah. where you pass these out and you help the kids. Right. Um, but if you're not that guy, you know, if you're not that guy. Now, you have to be honest with yourself. Say, I'm not that guy. I'm not going to do something and spend my money as well as get all the things it takes to do this thing. Don't, you know, spend six months here. Yeah. Back to your question. Yeah. How do you, how do you guard yourself? Spick, <laughs> spend six months and do something different. And that is date around. Because if you're the, you know, if you're old, over 60, probably didn't have a history. I know I certainly didn't. Uh, of dating a lot of women when I was younger. You know, I, I met her. I married her. Yeah. You know, yeah. stayed married for decades. Um, but get here, date around a little bit, spend some time. There's or not. Maybe it's the, the romance thing is not your thing. Yeah. Um, I met a guy the other day that, yeah, no, I'm single. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Just some guys come of guys over are. here just to write a book. Yeah. Some guys are fed up with with the whole <laughs> thought of dating, yep, uh, yep. they don't. A lot of guys, their desires have changed as they've gotten older. Mm -hmm. Their libido's shot or yeah, whatever, yeah. and they're self-conscious about that. And they say, you know, it's not fair to her, and it's no longer a priority. So I enjoy the company of a woman, but only in conversation. Yeah, and, and I think that's, you know, that's being able to accept the realities as we age mm -hmm. and um, getting comfortable with that. And um, it, I can see how discerning it can be, but I, I got to admire that guy that I met that told me that. He said, yeah. you know what, I just want to sit here and read my books and, and do my thing and, until the last day comes. Yeah. Peace yeah. on out. What else do you think, Goldfinger? Oh, well. I'll let you, know, you close it up. I meet lots of guys at Ground Zero that just got in the day before. Yeah. It's very common. Yeah. And they bring a lot with them when they come from the uh, U.S. or Canada. They have multitasking they got to do mm -hmm. they got all this list they got to do mm -hmm. and that, that 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 goes out the window here <laughs> you don't multitask here. You just, you just yeah. take your time do one thing at a time okay uh they start talking about politics uh, they'll bitch about biden or trump or whatever we don't do that here no okay uh they'll talk about the the new covid strain that just came out we don't do that here. no okay so the beauty of it is and I'm not going back home if I can help it. The beauty of it is, is I like the peace of mind, okay? Uh, you can look for things that are wrong, and, and, and if that's what you dwell on, you're not going to be happy, okay? If you dwell on things that are wrong... Uh, and you got to fix them. Yeah, forget it. You're not going to change. You're not going right. to change the customs. You're not going to change the people. Uh, it's just not going to happen that way. Uh, even though, oh, are you gonna are you gonna try to make a law change make requirement helmets helmets on children? No, absolutely not. Uh, I, I'd like to see them wear it. I want to protect them, but I don't want anything in law. I'm not trying to change their way of life or anything else. I just, right. Just try to you know, Bud did Bud Brown. He did the uh, shoes. Uh, he did the, Chinolas, Yeah. Yeah. The, the flip flops. The flip flops. Uh, because he saw kids barefoot, and there's there's sometimes broken glass or sharp uh -huh. objects on the. You know, mm -hmm. that was a very simple thing, and he helped who he could. He can't help everybody. Nope. But you know nope. what? You can't worry about that. You can help the ones no. you can help. And no, you do you'll you drive can. yourself nuts. Yeah, you mm -hmm. just do what you can. Yeah. There's obviously 10,000 kids in Dimageti alone. At least there's, there's 
um, about 15 schools and there's anywhere from 500 to 1500 kids in a school and that's just the uh, the local schools that's not the private schools no. okay um, I'm not gonna get helmets on every kid no but you know but what? you're doing your part you, you know you got you one can. one more one more noggin and covered you go, you're in good and, shape and if you see if I see kids riding on a bike without a helmet it's like Oh well, I'll get to them tomorrow. <laughs> maybe, maybe next month I'll get to their school. Yeah. You know, maybe you know. I just you can't worry about it. You can't let that bog you down. Well, I think with all the nuances that drives everybody crazy out here, and it does drive everybody crazy because the conversations are always the same. Mm -hmm. You know, what drives you nuts? Oh, the brownouts, the food, the bugs, the traffic, the, the traffic, the this, the that, blah blah, and. Um, and so it's, it's static. It never seems to change. It's it's just a, a matter of degrees. And so I think the three of us have pretty much been able to just adapt and mm -hmm. adjust and then accept it for what it is. We do have our moments where we wake up that day and where it didn't bother us yesterday, it's going to bother us today. As long as you can do a little self-realization, yeah. say, listen, you know, Maybe I should just stay home today <laughs> instead of going out into it. <laughs> or and maybe I, I should go, leave home for the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or maybe, yeah, in your case, oh leave. My God. Oh, I've had to do we it. We won't go yeah. there. Yeah, we won't go. I love, I love my girl. I've been with her for eight months now. She's wonderful. But there's a certain time of the month it's best for me to just stay at a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> See you later. Bye.